Shut up and sit down. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTubers. This is Damien at Fuel Exhaust, and today's video I'm going to show you how I make either a hawk or bross, depending on where whereabouts you are in the world, collector. I'm also going to make the the video showing me how showing you how I make the link pipe. Pretty much all, most of it's handmade. This is the most difficult part of it. It's not really difficult. It's just the way we hand make our collectors for the bross or hawk. Anyway, here's the video. What we're going to do here is we need to form this into a collector. So in order to do that, you can either put it through a set of rollers or you can tap it around the bar. Uh, this is my favorite way of doing it. It's just a nice and simple way, rubber mallet and a bit of skill just to round it up. So we get through to here, we put a nice radius on these, try and follow it, just trying to follow the profile on here. Ordering at the moment. Yep. Uh, and I just tap it down with the wooden mallet because obviously the rubber one just keeps it just to form it. This is just to tap it down. So when those edges come together when I'm tacking it, they should be nice and flush. We've got a nice formed collector. Just a few more to do. And there we have it. All should be with a nice equal gap all the way. All should be the same. All those gaps, nice and equal. Ready to weld. Next job. Okay, first job is we need to just pull these two edges together and we'll place a tack on one end and then a tack on the other. And we've got our chill bar here just to help us. So I can pull this together. What you can do with stainless is, as well, because we've tapped this end and there's a gap at that end, if we try and go there without pulling it in, it's going to blow it away. But what we can do is if we put a tap here, this edge will close up. So we can still carry on down the part. tacking it and it will pull this edge together so that we so that it doesn't blow away. So on the last pull, a nice little tap. Doesn't matter about this this edge at the moment, we're gonna sort that out if it's not quite level. So we'll Thank you. 
Right, we're back over at the vice. We've got this bar with our taper on. And all we're going to do is just tap down these little edges here. Because they sometimes, because of the thickness of the material, they're not exactly perfect. But rather than trying to get them perfect every single time before we tap, we'll just go over the top of them and tap them down. Just go through the whole lot like that. Okay, so all we're going to do now is just run a weld down here just to weld it up. So there's a few of those to do, so over to the welder. So now that we're back at the welder, all we're going to do is just run a, a line of weld down here. I use this as a chill bar just to try and take some of the heat out of the material. So here we go. All ready and welded. Ready for the next part, which is over to the fly press. We've now done the welding and the fabrication. So we've got it to this point. So we've got a nice cone shape there. Basically what we need to do next is we need to make this figure of eight shape because we're going to put two pipes in there and weld around. So we need to make this shape. But before we do that, we've obviously got to make it from a round to an oval. So we want to make it from this to this one. So. The way I do that is very, very simple. I just get a mallet. And what we need to do is wherever I'm hitting this, obviously when I'm hitting it in the, if I hit it in the middle there, it leaves the seam right on the side. Now, what I tend to do is I just want to hide the seam behind the vehicle so that you can't see it, so that the, it'll be on the back side. So all I do is just move and just rotate slightly and tap it into that oval shape. So we'll do that with all of them. Don't have to be exact, so they just need to be ovaled so that they will go onto my press tool. Okay, so now we've got all our shapes formed into this trumpet-like bugle shape. So they're all shaped like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go onto this press tool. It's a very, very simple press tool. It's not something I spent a lot of time making. It was something quick, easy, uh, just to put this mark in into our figure of eight. So we push it into here and we crush it down just to about this point. So we get 
our first figure of eight, put it on the other side, same position, down to there. Now, we've, now we have our figure of eight, or near enough. So we'll do that with all of the parts. If anybody wants to know the, the make of this, this is, a, this is a number eight fly press. It's a Sweeney and Bloxage, Birmingham, England. Uh, no idea how old it is, bloody old and it's bloody heavy. But this is what we call Big Bertha, because it's a uh, Big Bertha. So we have a few different other fly presses as well. But this is the main one that we just use for most of the jobs. Don't tend to see these in places anymore. They tend to be. Uh, you've got to use a bit of skill and a bit of knowledge to be able to use these. So we just want them to all be right. So last few. Just go around there. So, the next stage of the part is obviously because we've tapped them right down and what's happened to them is they, they end up going slightly oval. Um, so if we put them on here, they all go out of shape. So we get these funny shapes. Now, all we need to do to solve that is we'll just get, take our tools out. So, So, now we have this in, we can use our other tool, which is here. Now this has a, a taper in it, so basically we're going to form these into a round shape again. So straight onto the press, press it down, and just pop it down. What we're going to do is just set the stop as well, just so we get a repeatable job. So undo the top, bring the clamp down. So that we know that this is at the same time, same place. Tap that stop down, clamp, take that out. And what we should have is a nice round hole rather than our oval out of shape hole. So I'll do that, put it in there, bring this down. It shows you it returns that back to back to round. So I'll do some more. So straight into here, down to the stop, folds it back into a round. Rinse and repeat, all, oops, rinse and repeat to all of the parts. So when we fit this onto the collector, that's what it's looking like. But what we have is, we have a lot of gaps around the outside here. So, the way that I tend to take these up is I tap this round on a bar, just so it's a nice, neat finish around the side of these, so that we slide this on and it's nice and easy to weld and it doesn't blow away. So, the next stage is just we're gonna tap this around, round a bar. Okay guys, the next thing we're going to do is we're just gonna tap the edges of these over, uh, like so whether you can see the difference. Now, the differences are, if I put this upside down, you can see that when 
this fits into there, we've got a large gap around the outside and that's not really any good for welding. What we, what we need to do is make sure when we've tapped it over that when this just fits in here just nicely, just tap it in, we should end up with a nice tight gap or hardly any gap around here which is more suitable for welding. So do. What we use for this is we use just a wooden mallet. So the reason we use a wooden mallet is so that when we're tapping the edges over it doesn't splay them, it doesn't squash them, it's just forming metal. I'm going to put my ear defenders on for this because it's quite noisy. So I have, a, I have a mark on the bar here just so that you can see, so that I can see that when I put my collector onto here I'm going to hit it in this position and rotate it and just squash the edges down. So. So now we've got this figure of eight, we just check it on here, fits nicely, very nice fit, good for welding, so we can take all these gaps out, so now all we've got to do is do the rest of them. Last one. And there we go. What you can also do with this as well is just to fine tune it, if there's any any sort of gaps in here uh, around the collector when you when you fitted this, all I do is I go around and I go around with a ball pain hammer and I just Tighten those edges up. And it just tightens them all in and brings it nicer for a, a really, really nice tight weld. If we get it off. And we've got some really nice tight gap around here. We'll pull this in when, before we weld it. And so that's pretty much the stage on that part of the collector. 
We've just got to make sure on the next bit we do a tube bend because the tube bend comes out here. So we just have to make sure we match this up, uh, the size of the, the hole here to the, to the actual link pipe. And then we're going to weld a small piece in here, which I'll show you next, uh, to stop any, obviously we've got our airflow coming through here, so we need to block that up. So we'll weld a piece into here, uh, and then that'll be the next stage. So off to the tube bender next to get the pipe bends. Okay guys, we're over at the pipe bender now. This is the old British pipe bender that I've been using for donkey's years now. Uh, great machine, never breaks down. Touch wood. Okay, so just gonna bend up a couple of brass pipes because I've got some orders for the collectors that I've been doing. So rather than bend 10 of them up uh, and go through all that, I'm just gonna bend two for the orders that I've got to go out. Uh, there's one going out to America and Canada uh, each, I think. So. Uh, the first thing we need to do is obviously set up the pipe bender, but when we do that, before we need that, we've just got a, a spec sheet here, which is just a really rough diagram just to show me what I need to do. Basically, I need to set my tangent on the machine at 125. Uh, the total length of the tube is 250 mil long. It tells me what, I, what angle to bend it at and what to cut off. So that's just a simple thing. So we need 250 long pieces of tube, which I keep in this box here. So we've got a couple of them there. So what I need to do is fire up the pipe bender, but if you if you remember when I said before, this tangent starts at 125, so that's where the start of the bend is. So I go over to my, this is my rack of all my bends basically, of where the tangents start on a bend. So we need the 125. So we'll take that out there. Put it onto the mandrel, turn the machine on. Put the machine mandrel all the way forward. Push that in. We get our length of 250 long tube. Put that in until it hits the stop at the back. Close the clamp. I use a little clamp that just stops it crushing the tube. It also allows me to use really short lengths of tube for my bends. Also set the angle. So close. Close the clamp, lock the clamp, engage the dog gear, and then we just bend the stop, take the mandrel back, disengage the gear, undo the clamp, take the plug out. And there we should have our bend to the cross. So I'll just go through that again. With the second one that I need to do. Again, bring the mandrel forward. I put my weld seam in the middle here, just so it's out of the way. When I push that in, up to the stop, clamp the clamp, put the plug in, tighten it, Engage the gear. There we go. Mandle back. Disengage. Put the gear. Undo the clamp. Take the plug out. And here we have our second bend. So. Next job is over to the saw, just to cut them. Uh, so over to the saw now. Okay, so we're over at the saw. We're just gonna cut these bends. On our little spec sheet here, it just tells us to cut off 30 mil off, 35 mil off this end, 110 mil off that end. So over to the saw, so 35 mil. 
So I have a little plate that I sit in here just so that I can sit my bends nice and flat so it'll, I'll get a nice square cut every time. Versus if I try to put it in here, it moves about. So I just made a little plate that just sits in the rice. So now I can safely cut a nice square cut. So we want it at 35 millimeters. So we get it at 35 mil. Tighten, double check. So that's at 35 mil now. I'll set my stop. And now cut. So that's the first side. So we we'll get go for the second. Because we've got our stop, we just take it straight up to there. So, obviously now we go to remove the stop. Just clean any swarf away. And now we would need to cut off 110 millimeters off that side. So, there we have 110. Set our stop. As you can see here, we're left with a very, very small bend. So the majority of the bend ends up in scrap because all this is the only part we're using. I'll just cut the other side, go back into the vise, make sure there's no swarf underneath, clamp. So, we're left with a little, leaves a little tag on here, so we just snip that off. Same again here, snip them off, and then we take it over to the deburrer, because we want to deburr the inside and the outside of the tube. I'm going to put my gloves on for this, because obviously there's sharp corners. So. This does the inside and the outside deburr in one hit. So there, we have a nice deburred tube. No sharp edges anymore. All we need to do here now is just give them a clean out and we'll match these up now with the next part of the job which is obviously welding these on the jig these go into the collector the collector goes onto the other two bits of tube but we also need to size this first on the end former so that everything goes together nice and tightly which will give us a nice neat weld okay over to the end former the first thing we need to have a look at is obviously when you bend a tube what happens is it goes slightly oval it's not they say it's not supposed to on a mandrel bend but it it does actually reduce slightly in the, in the on the bend side so we end up with an oval bit of tube so all i do is put this flat on the bench and give it a tap until it's closer to round than it was before same with the other one. Rough 
hopefully this is roughly nice and round. So what we're going to do is just test fit them into here. Hopefully, if we've done our job right, they should be a nice tight fit. So we've got a, a nice fit around here, but we can still move the part so it make it easier in the jig when we're, when we're fitting everything together. And we want a nice tight seam around here because if we've got no gaps, it makes our welding job much easier and much neater. So same thing there, try that in. Just nice, maybe a little bit slack on that one. So what I can actually do is then form it up. And so just go up a little bit on the sizing of this tube. Just to make it a little bit bigger so that it fits. So now we have a lot and a lot need to fit in there. It's a lot tight, it's not gonna drop through. So now that's prepped. For the job I need to do next, I need to clean all the parts. Pre preparation for welding. We want all our pots, parts spotlessly clean uh, so that we get a nice neat weld. Okay, so we're over at the welder. So the first thing I'm gonna do is chuck the jumper on. So, Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is switch my welder on. And I'm just going to put a little tack here and here. So a little blob of weld just there and there. And sometimes when we make these, they just need a, to be clamped in a little bit when we're welding. So I put the, the little thing on there so that I can squeeze this part in easier. So the first thing, is to do that. So, we just want a little blob there. Just to turn the welding mask on. So just put a little dot there. Same on the other side. Just there, same on the next one. So now we've just got two location points there where we can nip that in if we need to. So, firstly, we need two of these. These are our inlets, so they go straight onto there. The next thing we need is we just need a bridge between those two points. Oops, so we're gonna use this little bridge here and we just put it on there and tap it into position. So now we have a bridge between those, so we're just gonna tap those up and weld them. Tap them first. Just tap that one down a little. So now that we're tapped, what we're going to do is just get a little weld along here. And on the other side. So there's our inside weld. 
just before we do anything else, we need to go over to the fly press and we're just going to put a little V into that before we weld those together. Because obviously this comes down to a point, so we need this to come down to a point as well. And all we're going to do is pop this onto there. And we're just going to do a V shape in, in the middle there. So we're just going to crush into there. So we've made our V shape with our press tool just to make it a lot easier to go together. So now that we've done that, we're going to just weld along these two points here on this side. So we're going to weld from here. Okay, so now all this point is sealed inside. So, what we're going to do is pop this on here. Now our first thing we want to make sure is we get this on the right way. So I happen to know that this is the back side of the collector, so it's out of the way of the front. And then we just give that a tap on there. Down. So we'll put our first end of the boss pipe all the way up to there and then it sits in the G against this part here. So then this goes on there and we just rotate it and move it into position until we can get our bolts in. And what I'm going to do is just tap it until it comes round. To our point where we can get our bolt through. So now we're clamped up. So we just have a look around just to make sure all the points are in and all our points are tucked in in our jig and we're ready to rock and roll now. So the first thing I do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to clamp these two halves together just there just to bring it in just a little bit and I'm going to place a tack in each point here to hold those two points together. Turn it over and we'll just have a look at the other side and I can just get a nice tack in there on that side. see here we've got a nice edge along here so I can weld all the way around that's not a problem now that we've got a tack there but we're going to tap this pipe in just three places as well just to make sure that doesn't need as well A little 
little bit of filler on in that one. Okay. So, next thing I want to do is just grab a pipe. So, just got my pipe in there just to give it purge it. So, we fill the, fill the inside of the pipe with argon gas. So, that basically, we've got a nice well on the inside. If there's any penetration, it goes through and the gas will keep it covered and have a nice weld on the inside as well as the outside so no horrible welding dags, black marks etc things sticking out so just turn that down just a touch just make sure my tungsten is nice and sharp Okay, so that's as far as we can get round on that side. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, undo this, spin it, turn it round. So I'm just tap that down. So I'm just going to fuse them together. Obviously I'm not going to touch it yet because it would be very very hot. Uh, the next stage would be to weld a centre stand stop on these but the two customers I have in uh, America and Canada respectively have requested no centre stand stop on there so we're not putting them on. The next thing we've got to do is take it over to the blaster just to blast them off uh, and finish them and then they'll go in a bag with the respective 
can, brackets, and whatever have you. That is how I make a brass pipe at Fuel Exhausts. I'm Damien, thanks very much for watching. If you'd like to subscribe, that'd be great to help us out. Subscribe, like, dislike, whatever you want to do, whatever you want. See you next time.